Welcome, ladies and gentlemen. This is Basil Rathbone inviting you to join me beyond the green door. Today we will meet Billy Fitzhugh, a curio collector, whose hobby inevitably led him beyond the green door. It was in the Pakistani village of Mandragori that Fitzhugh saw the knife. The village was small and its bazaar was hot, dusty and filled with cheap silverware. Nothing to interest a collector like Fitzhugh until in a corner of one small booth he saw the knife. The inlay work was both ancient and excellent. Fitzhugh could tell that just by looking at the hilt in the scabbard. But when he started to draw the knife, the little fat merchant stopped him with a cry of alarm. Sir, you must not. That is a Kabiri knife. It can be drawn only to kill. Like a Sikh knife, Fitzhugh said. Like it, sir, but not the same, the merchant said. The Sikh knives must be drawn to take blood. But the Kabiri is more ancient and more terrible. Kabiri knives are always poisoned and they are drawn only to kill. I want it, Fitzhugh said. But first I want to look at the blade. No, sir, the merchant said firmly. I cannot risk the consequences. Only poverty made me offer it for sale. Now I've changed my mind. Obviously this was a trick to raise the price. But it was too hot for haggling. So Fitzhugh made an offer which the merchant accepted with a fine show of reluctance and many warnings. In his hotel room, Fitzhugh took the knife from its cabbard and examined the blade. It was a, a marvellous old steel, richly wrought, needle-pointed. Along its edge, uh, there was a faint smear, probably poison. Fitzhugh put the knife back in its cabbard, packed it away and thought no more about it. He wasn't superstitious about these things. He didn't think about the knife until Bombay. Unpacking in his hotel room, the knife uh, fell out of his suitcase. It hit the floor and its naked blade spun towards him. He jumped out of the way just in time. When he put the knife in its scabbard again, he secured it there with a piece of string. No sense in fooling with a poison knife. But in Paris, his cab had a collision. Fitzhugh was thrown violently to the floor. His suitcase burst and the knife tumbled out. Its string broke and the blade came at him again. He got out of the way just in time. Again, he scabbarded the knife and told himself rather uneasily that he was having some bad luck. But he felt better by the time he was back in his New York apartment and the knife, firmly wired to its scabbard, was ready for nailing to the wall among his collection. Perhaps he was nervous. The first blow of the hammer smashed the scabbard and the Kabiri blade dropped like a dart and stuck point first into his shoe. <laughs> The tough collar and leather had just managed to stop that deadly point from penetrating to his skin. That made entirely too many coincidences. Fitzhugh laid that cursed knife on the floor and smashed it with a hammer. He broke the hard, brittle steel into a dozen pieces, destroying the knife and the Kabiri curse also. Only when he had finished did Fitzhugh notice the grey, smeared splinter of steel that had lodged in his hand.